Yo, what's happening, good people? Thank you again for tuning in. Revolutionary intent. Got the brothers. I'm the host with the most. Got the brothers, Walter, Quick, and Nicholas down in the other corner. So we thank you all for being here. Uh, we understand about this one. This is going to be a little doozy. Uh, this is going to be an interesting conversation, hopefully. We have a, good, a lot of good feedback uh, with this conversation as we still as we still talking about uh, the boys's uh, dark water, the voices from within the veil, and this week we're on the chapter souls of white folk. Ah. Uh, Y'all go ahead and take your deep breath, like, share. Uh, <laughs> comment, whatever. I gotta stir, I gotta sterilize uh, my atmosphere. I, I, and, and and if when people go back and look at this, I, I I'm really if you get a chance, you know, we really hadn't said you need to find this one, but this is a this is an article or uh, essay that I think you need to find, if you don't have a copy of the text, you might be able to find this in a PDF file somewhere online. Um, as the boys is really, I think we were talking, uh, Walter and I was talking earlier, I, you know, we came to the conclusion, this may be the boys' response after folks read Souls of, white, Souls of Black Folks. It It, it is, uh, it is something. I, I don't know which one of y'all want to start. I got a place I can start it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Walter. Let me start. Let me start a little soft. A little soft. <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little, you, you would be the uh, one to do that. Yeah. Place to begin. I'm in another book club, a books book study that uh is community based. we the whole purpose is to bring the races together. We re we're reading a book called The The Loudest Duck. And the last chapter had a parable of the elephant and the mouse. And uh, the way he opens this essay talk is really ties that together. The, the elephant doesn't care about the mouse, doesn't have to know what the mouse is doing because whatever the elephant starts moving, the mouse don't get out of the way because, you know, but the mouse has to know everything there is to know about the elephant. The mouse knows when the elephant's not in a good not feeling not in a good mood or the elephant is angry or whatever because that's going to have a direct effect on the mouse who is in this same space and area with this elephant and that's exactly where the uh wb du Bois begins here was is with this i i know their thoughts yeah, yeah. I, I know everything there is to know about them i know them inside and out i can see I know when they're not in a good mood. You know, he doesn't say that exactly, but I know when things aren't going well for the white folks because, and I got to know. But what hit me is he's a little bit different. He says, I know their thoughts and they know that I know. Know that I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that hit me a little bit different than what we're, we're talking about in the other group because over here, even though they know that I know instead of that causing some change in their behavior, that the elephant behavior still is, well, you can't do nothing to me. And if you say something to me, I'm going to get even more angry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the, what, what the that, word, he uses the word singularly clairvoyant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Singularly yeah. Clairvoyant. And, and I'm glad you, I'm glad you bring that up. And, and, uh, this lovely sister here says, good evening. The great. We got to get y'all in the whole time. I need to get a room, man. Y'all need to get a room. <laughs> we got six. six of them. <laughs> Keep it holding. Keep it holding. Keep it holding. Keep it holding. Well, they married. They, they oh, married. Right. They good. Y'all good. Make you do what they do then. Make you do what they hey. do. Well, however y'all feel about it. <laughs> but, 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 but you make this statement that that's singularly clairvoyant. That that mm -hmm. is something that uh, got my attention. Even when he says, because the way Du Bois is talking about 
white folks, you would think he would see them as demonic and soulless. But yet he he refers to them as, you know, I can I'm, I'm, I see them, you know, clearly, and I can see exactly what they're going to do before they're doing they're doing it. But yet he still says they have souls, mm -hmm. which was which was which was kind of interesting to me, because if if I have that type of clarity with the intellect that Du Bois does, it would be hard for me to say that these folks have souls. Well, that you say that that would bring me to think about what my granddaddy would say with the. Killing with kindness, not necessarily stooping or not stooping to how they would look at me as being pretty much soulless. I, I, I give you, I give you humanity. I give you a soul, even though I know what you think about me. I know what you're you're thinking before you even think it, and so I I, I would like to. Em Impose that maybe Dr. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois is not so much of playing their game or doing what they would do to him, in a sense. I, 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 I get that. that because, because I think that if you say that you don't have a soul, that means you're not responsible for what you're doing. Hmm. We all know there's a responsibility with our souls. Regard so our actions, and if we're soulless, right, then there's no then there's really no hope. If there's no soul, there is no hope. So there is a soul, and I think that's what he's playing on. The fact is we know I, that but let, let's if is mentally ill, you can't charge them with the same uh crime if they murder somebody as you do with somebody who knows what they're doing. Or has it, and so he doesn't want to give them an out by saying they don't have a soul. But but the the hope is now we know where the boys ends up. So, but the boy says there is no hope here in America. So with that with that type of uh, clarity and him knowing that there is no hope for him to still see that these folks have souls when in inevitably he comes to the conclusion that we can't win that then he comes to the conclusion also that these folks have no soul but i, I would ask this and, 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 how, and, and, and I'm, being, I'm being harsh i'm being real harsh you, you, you're saying that he concluded that he said they don't have souls no no or? i'm not I, I'm, I'm now this is me right. rhetorically you're, you're saying because really. you have yeah, and, oh, and, and, right. I, and right. I'm really playing on his words here, okay. playing on the words of souls of white folks. Mm -hmm. But even though he sees it, he never treats them like that. Because you said it specifically that he's clairvoyant. He sees oh. the souls, the soullessness of these folks, yet he never treats them as if they don't, they are soulless. Go ahead, Nick, I'm sorry. No, I, 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 was, I was asking with your your interjection how how far is this writing between when he gets to that point to where he's at the point of no return and saying that there's just no hope in america i want to say a, a, a couple a lot of you know 10 20 years so it had to be some some matriculation to get to that point so so maybe this writing is more of a more hopeful uh understanding than his ultimate ending of saying that there's no hope and see because he left you know the, you know the bible talks about if people don't receive you then then you knock the dust off of your shoes and i think that that's what by him leaving, I don't think that means that um, necessarily that that they have they don't have souls. He's like, well, they're just not receiving what I'm saying, so I'm dipping. I mean, that's and I mean, 
and, and it comes to a point where you know he's he's done a lot of work before he left though. It's like I did a lot. I planted some seeds, and maybe you know he said, "Hey, maybe it's better." It's kind of like you know maybe like in that scene of Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer where Rudolph cuts himself off the iceberg. <laughs> maybe I'm better off. Yeah. You know, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm calling. I'm calling a 20 second time out here. <laughs> Did you just say Rudolph the Red <laughs> Nose Reindeer? I mean, I still cry when I watch that part, man. I still cry hey. when I. Hey, I, I think I'm going to go. Hey, I'm blowing a flag on the prey. <laughs> he off the iceberg and he says goodbye, everybody. Man, that, I'm still, man, I still drop a tear on that, bro. Oh. But maybe that's why he left. Like, you know, I planted seeds and, it's, you know, it's time for me to go. Well, um, he, he was getting old. He was, he's not getting uh, old. He was older. No. You know, you can't, you, he's fought the good fight uh, and hadn't seen any. And, and here, here is how you have to really be careful because he talks about do not confuse liberation with progression. And, and this is what, so he didn't see, he saw limited progression, but no liberation. Well, I think when, when you say that and reading this chapter and kind of how he maneuvers, it made me think about this notion of how we so quickly uh, confuse movement with progress. Right. And 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 it, it was it's an analogy that my granddad used to use. Um, he would say, "You get on a rocking horse, you moving, but you ain't going nowhere." Yeah, that's, um, that's a grand, that's a granddad statement. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think this, this and, and with the boys and reading this chapter, I think about, you know, Derek Chauvin and all these things, these, these movements that are this movement that is going on, but is there any progress? And, and mm. it goes to that statement that Martin uses is, is this a transaction or is this transformation? And so the boys is dealing with, you know, white folk to say you know we I, i'm i'm not trying to mistake your your movement or what what you're saying or how you prescribing things for progress for for black folk yeah 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 so so when you see now in the in the litany to to atlanta because this is why everything y'all saying, this is why I, I made the, the comment. What kind of started pushing me there when he starts talking about is that it's at the uh the end of 15 when he, he says, Keep out thou silent, O God. Keep not thou silent, O God, sit no longer blind, Lord God, deaf to our prayers, dumb to our dumb suffering. Surely thou Two are not white, O oh Lord, a pale, bloodless, heartless thing. See, that, that was why, that's why it got me thinking in this way, okay, the boys is really starting to deal with whiteness unlike anything he deals with in Souls of Black Folks. Like, particularly whiteness, not so much white people, but whiteness. And then when you, when you actually get, get to... Uh, the souls of black folks, he still starts dealing with whiteness and white peoples and dealing with white folk and dealing with them simultaneously and showing you how they run parallel to each other. And at times, the problem is when they intersect, when whiteness intersects with white folk, that hmm. is when you get a uh, 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 Leopold and some of these, these folk who are thinking because you show up and you give money, you know, when he makes the statement, uh, America sends $5 million worth of evangelistic mission tools to Africa. And in the same year, they send $25 million worth of rum and alcohol to, to the same space. And he's, he's really painting the picture about the contradiction of the two. And so you see white folk and whiteness colliding 
And there we have a, a, a very bad uh, issue. Well, I didn't see that as really a contradiction, but more so as um, an investment to make it possible to send the 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 um, the donations the 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 charity that's going there opens is how you get into Africa to then sell the rum and gin and uh, and then to also colonize and do all the other stuff uh, that ultimately has economic goal. Uh, that that was with the breakdown of and and I'm guilty of uh, teaching World War One um, and World War Two for that matter uh, as being about alliances and the you know the um, the killing of Archduke Ferd, Fan, Ferd, uh, Fran Ferdinand and and all of that and then the alliances kicked in and that's how we ended up in World War One but um, the more that I know to today. <laughs> The more I understand, World War One had very little to do with Europe and everything to do with Africa. Right, right, right. That's when, or in Asia for that matter as well. Uh, that's when the colonization really took off because, as as the boys makes plain, this this fighting was never about, um, you know, Germany still stayed in place, so it wasn't about taking over any land there. Uh, it was it was really about making room for yourself and to expand other places, you know, into the darker, as they say, areas of the world. Right, 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 right. Um, and I'm looking for that quote, uh, but he thought, but he says, uh, and I'm uh, I'm on the Kindle, so I don't know what page it is, but um, he said some people. For some, it, it brought the Schaden fraud, and I had to look that up. That means uh, pleasure at someone else's misfortune. That World War One brought Schaden fraud for others, but for most of us, I judged, we looked on silently and sorrowfully in sober thought, seeing sadly the prophecy of our own souls. He's talking about white people fighting other white people in World War One. He said, "Now if they gonna kill each other." <laughs> Mm -hmm. oh, tell me what they're gonna do to us. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and here it is. And the reason is the reason why they're doing it, it's all it comes back, unfortunately, economics. You could yeah. Or or economics. or in, in our present day climate, you know, the, the opportunity to represent, you know, you see these folks getting rid of uh what's the white lady's name? In the Republic of Cheney, Liz Cheney, Liz Cheney, we're getting rid of Liz Cheney because she makes a, a, a stand. Now you get rid of your own, you know, and you and you kind of diminish voting rights in black and brown communities simultaneously. Right. You know, you don't have any care and concern for for anybody that's not a white male, right? A Trump, uh, what is that? Trumpian or Trump, whatever they call Trump it. Supporter. And so the boys is 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 making this, this ever kind of kind of elephantly as as them old Baptist preachers say they're elephantly clear. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, I mean, and he, again, that he's saying the day of the very rich is drawing to a close. So yeah. far as individual white nations are concerned, but there is a loophole. There is a chance for exploitation. Yep. Uh -huh. On an immense scale, for an inordinate profit, not simply to the very rich, but to the middle class and to the laborers. That, but that's still see that move with Cheney is still about not just the, the very rich. They know they're set. I mean, now with the way the system is already set up, but they've got to keep control of the middle class and the laborers. Mm -hmm. And Liz Cheney is not talking the talk of the middle class and the laborers right now. She's talking the talk of somebody who really believes in democracy. <laughs> who right. really believes in in, in 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 integrity of elections and stuff like that? And that that's not what they're talking about. I mean, they, they they're saying it, but that's not what they're talking about. So how so how do you how do you all equate that to how the boys is is 
talking about this failure in democracy. It was never set up to be a democracy. I mean, I don't even think, I mean, I don't see where, I, don't, I just don't see where it was ever set up. America was set up to be a democracy. It was set up for a place for a certain number of people to prosper. The same reason why they set up the Ivy League schools. It was like, if I can just set up a place, make this fancy school, my kids will be able to come through and we'll keep it going. So a democracy should be something in which that, that it should be for all people, but it's never been for all people. It, it, anytime you say the, 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 the Constitution says three fifths and refer that to a human, that's not right. democracy. I mean, that's, I mean, so it's like you, you, you started it out on a lie. And so like my, my like, like my, my um, great grandma, you say you lie, then you have to lie about the lie and you keep lying and you keep, keep the lie because, because, uh, uh, you know, it's the, the deal with the USC president. Because, oh, because, Lord. Hold on, I'm going to bring, I'm gonna bring you together because, you know, this is all a part of that Trumpian thing, right? So and so he tried to resign and they said no because they didn't want to admit to why. They were wrong. How can you be the yeah. president of a university without a doctor's degree? And so the brother who, who gets the job at LSU, now they're trying, from what I'm hearing, they're trying to get a package for him to stay. And I would be like, heck to the no. no. I'm out. Look at what you're dealing with. They cannot, because they're never wrong. They're never wrong. The guy tried to resign. They said no. So he says, he goes out and gives another gaffe. Then finally, you know, when there's nothing, they salvage salvaged something. They say, okay, we accept your resignation. He never got fired. Yeah. Still, it's a resignation. So, so it's never set up. The, I mean, it's not set up for us. I mean, it never was. It, the system, that's why we call it the system. That's why we call it racism, because it's a system to systematically divide us and put us in certain and deny us all the rights that, the, that what it says in the Constitution. Just like, you know, you hear certain segments of people say, well, we're not for big government. But then you pass 240 laws against voter suppression. Yeah, I'm out. I, I got to stop right there. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm going to stop. I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put the mute button on myself. <laughs> I mean, that's, but I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's sick. Bro, that's sick. So no, you, tell me, you tell me you're going to, you going to, you going to put me in jail if I give out water like I did last time? Yeah. Well, he says it. He says it on 25 hmm. in, the, in the middle of the page. Everything great, good, efficient, fair, and honorable is white. <laughs> Everything mean, bad, blundering, cheating, and dishonorable is yellow. A bad taste is brown, and the devil is black. <laughs> the changes of this theme are continually wrung in picture and story in newspaper heading and moving picture in sermon and school book until, of course, the king can do no wrong. A white man is always right, and a black man mm -hmm. has no rights, which a white man is bound to respect. Yeah, that, that's from the dread. What is the dread Scott case? Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's just like the soldier here. He was asking the dude, whether or not he belonged in the neighborhood. The dude said, Well, how long have you been here? <laughs> he didn't, what, what do you mean? You can't ask me that. And the dude had been there longer than him. It's and that like, took, took me back to our class. That's sick, man. It's great until it touched the ground and turned dirty. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I would put myself on mute again. But that's what I, you know, that's the, that's the, that's the portrayal. That's, and, and I would even think. Oh, ho, 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 hold up, Nick. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Say, say that you said. I want to be clear because the words matter. You said betrayal as if folks really cared to be in the first place. Right. 
<laughs> well, I would say this. <laughs> I was, you know, no, you I, I, get, I was going to, I was, I was headed to say <laughs> that I will push in some sense to say that that is somewhat the veil that is put up mm. to say right. this is what we say it is mm -hmm. and now, now, now I, I, yeah. that that is that is let me let me ask you this as as a as a, as a church boy could you preach that because understand and the reason i'm saying it like this and not to throw theology in there because the boys is taking this from the the, the hebrew text He's taking it from the gospel and said, this is what, the, you know, the meaning of the veil. We know what that means. But your mm -hmm. definition of the veil, could you preach that uh, the way that you just described it? Could you then preach that in a sermon? And no, 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 not could, not could. Yeah. Would, 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 would. I, I would, but I'm saying, and there's a reason why I say that. Because Du Bois is very intentional to connect what he's saying to poor black people, poor, no, poor black Christian folks. That's why I asked that question, because it has to be able to, to pass that, communica that communica communicative uh, junction in the black church for your, for your definition to be true. Well, I would say yes. Now, you preach it out at Terry I would, say, Hill. I, I would say that there would be many questions to come from that, but I think that would create a teachable moment. That would create a dialogue to get beyond um, how I often like to say it, that yes, Jesus loves me because the Bible tells me so theology. And kind of move towards a more liberative. Um, now, let's be clear: there are a lot of people, a lot of a lot of African American people in our in our communities and in our midst that still believe Jesus was blonde headed, blue eyed. Oh, we don't doubt that. And so, you got to reconstruct that that ideology to 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 really understand to make this veil. Uh, to bring this veil to real life and to the 21st century to say this veil ain't just torn in two in the Gospels. This veil got to be torn in, in twain in 21st century in our communities and in our living rooms and in, in our jobs that we go to on a daily basis. And so I think that's that's a a a, 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 a segue to kind of create that that conversation. Now it would be a tough one because you ain't on you ain't on disrupt my Jesus. Oh, I I will. I'm I mean, about, I'm, I'm not I'm talking about you. About, I'm all about I'm rupturing your Jesus. And, and see, and this is why I read that first that statement by Du Bois, because Du Bois is telling you Jesus is not white. You notice when he started going what? around the black the black characters, he says there's nothing that ever came out of Europe that that we can't be better than or have not done from Africa and Asia. And then he starts telling you who Nefertiti yeah. and uh, somebody well, else. Well, but then guess who he yeah. ends with? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> well, you know Jesus was black because when they came to arrest him, he was the only one without a weapon, and they arrested him. Well, you know what Fred Shepard said. They people with weapons. Fred Shepard said. Everybody Fred, had weapons. Fred Shepard said, look, ain't no way you can be in Egypt all that time and not wear <laughs> no hat and not be black. <laughs> but uh, Tony said Jesus is black. Oh. Uh. Man, the best I've heard is he's a Middle Easterner. That's the best I heard. Like, I've never heard, I never heard anybody white say Jesus is black. There's a classroom have, in my church that got a, a white Jesus in it, and every time I walk by that classroom, I cringe. 
I just want to knock it off the wall. It's hard, man. And I told you, it took me, I mean, like, up until seminary, my image of Jesus was still, I mean, I grew up with his image. I couldn't just shed it like that, even though I knew, yeah. it, I knew it wasn't white. But, like, if I were di- if, if I were going to feel like I was dying or when I'm praying, I'm like, that's the same Jesus I saw at Aaron Temple United Methodist Church as a kid. Like, I can't just, I, it, it, it's not something that I could wipe away very easily. Because what, it was so instilled in me. What um, makes me cringe the most is when you sit in some of these churches and they got the stained glass window behind the pulpit with the white Jesus. I'm like, oh my gosh. The G, the, G, the hippie Jesus. The Jesus yeah, just, the just, just up there, just, just yeah. floating. And I'm like, oh they, no. They, they, they got a big picture of him in the church here in Columbia, boy. Biggest one I've ever seen. Biggest one. Just, you know, but Listen to this. Listen to this, this part right here. Ask your own soul what it would say if the next census were to report mm-hmm. that half of Black America was mm-hmm. dead and the other half dying. Mm-hmm. Keep reading. Don't stop right there. No, I stopped right there with a reason because the, <laughs> I, I got to get you let y'all think about that. Because I, I, when I read it, I stopped underlining and started thinking about it. Because James Baldwin writes this uh, essay called "Many Thousands Gone" in response to Richard Wright talking about the same thing about what would happen if tomorrow you wake up and uh, and there's a hundred thousand black people, you know, and he using. 100,000, not so much that it was 100,000, but it was enough black people that were gone that you would know they were gone. And what would you do? How how would that how would that feel in America? Because his thought, his end result is that you will know the difference. The I'm, boys, afraid, go I'm afraid I'm going back to captivity. You, we, know, know, the, no, we know the difference. Police in South Carolina, we know the difference because the governor said we're going to cut off them unemployment benefits mm-hmm. until y'all Negroes go back to work. Oh, well, 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 let, let me read. Let me finish reading then. <laughs> I will skip down. Well, let me read it. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Pay attention. Pay attention to how he punctuates it. Unfortunate question mark that's crazy unfortunate period Period. but where's the misfortune now that's crazy it's unfortunate because i had to i had to wonder about that unfortunate unfortunate but where is the misfortune in these folk having to go back to work when they were making money more money or uh uh, getting unemployment than at their job Unfortunate question mark for who? Who is it unfortunate for? And, and it's not that it's it's not the problem that they were not making enough money. Or that that they, there was more profitable for them to be on unemployment. That's not it, the, the problem. Is not with the the person who controls the capital. That's why we call it capitalism. It, the problem is not with the person who controls the capital. The problem is with the person, the laborer, who is just supposed to. Take what the capitalist gives. Right, right, right. And the boys yeah. talked about that too. Yeah. But but, but let, let me finish. Let me go ahead. I'm sorry. Listen, but where is the misfortune? Question mark. Mine. Question mark. Am I in my blackness the sole sufferer? Suffer. Question mark. I suffer. And yet somehow above the suffering, above the shackled anger, anger that beats the bars above the hurt that crazes their surges in me a vast pity comma dash pity for a people in prison enthralled hampered made miserable for miserable for such a cause for such listen to this for such a fantasy man what in the sam hill this fantasy. And then there's another thing here when the boy says America, comma, United States. <laughs> Can y'all help me make sense of that? 
he because he he's very intentional about that. You know, the boys doesn't doesn't play with words. You know, boy, the America, comma, United States. The United States is not America. <laughs> we've said that. I mean, we've, and, we've, and, we and have then, gotten it in our head when we say America, we only think United States. Well, that's because he gets it. He does kind of miss it. Like you say, he kind of hits it. Talks about what what happened with South America and and the you know the, again the raping and the pillaging and everything else that happened in the colonization around them. So, yeah, again, I have to join Martin and start muting myself. They don't need to mute. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I was just talking while I was still on mute. Well, look at God. I was, I was saying something earlier. I was, I was still on mute. I was like, be quiet. I was like, okay, I'll be quiet. Okay. But look, I think one of the most profound statements in the book, I said I was going to start here until Walter said he jumped, he's going to jump it off and started this uh, rigmarole we got going on here. <laughs> he says, a true and worthy ideal frees up yes. lists of people, a false ideal imprisons and lowers. Yes. Let me, let me tell you something. Yes. That's 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 hardcore there. That's hard body. Ask a member, uh, a true member, a true conservative of the Republican Party, whether they feel freed or imprisoned today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. They, they, they're the and hallelujah. The people on the planet, but they say they're free. Man, please. I'm scared of this. I'm afraid of that. I'm losing. No, no. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about a true conservative, true, yep. who is now dealing with a party that is being that has given the keys to a our grader. former president, a seventh grader. You give him seventh grade. Our former president. So I'm just saying, Third like a person like with, with Brian started with, with a person, a person like uh, Senator. Uh, a representative Liz Cheney, who now is being stripped, stripped of her, not just uh, stripped of her leadership role. Uh, you know, a pow third most powerful Republican in the, in Congress, stripped of her leadership. If that isn't a false ideal, imprisoning a people, I mean, again, I don't want, I ain't have no pity parties for any uh, anybody who. Cause she did go along with the former president up until a certain point, but now that that false idea, she's they're pulling away. Try, she was trying to pull away from it. You can't pull away from. It. I mean, once you're in stop, there, once you stop playing the part, once you once you lay down with with, with you got to go. You say you lay down with Dodge Cold Fleet. I mean, it's you once you in there, you in there. No getting out. Ain't no getting and, out. And, of and it. it doesn't getting out, but there's a price to pay. Oh yeah. There's some shackles that are going to come along with that. That you know, you're going to lose something, and so, you know, again, I'm not liking it to the same kind of not free that we might feel at times. But that's the I, that is it. That this this I the lie, and I was listening, and I don't mean to take us too far, but I was listening to dude from Georgia trying to explain what happened on January the sixth. And this dude says, I don't know if y'all saw this, but this dude says that if you take away the commentary from the mainstream media and you just watch those, he said it wasn't even an insurrection. He said, if you take away the commentary from the mainstream media, you just watch those people walk through the corridors. They stayed within the uh, the stanchions and you would have just thought that was a, a regular tour of the White House. And I said to myself to what? borrow a phrase from my good friend, what kind of fragonago mess is he talking? <laughs> was he blind? Was he blind? He is he has to tell the lie. He has oh. to spread this false ideal to support what what he's trying to support. Now the truth won't support what they're saying. The truth yeah. just won't it, it, <laughs> it can't, you know, as far as the east is from the west. But this is the, I, I would also this is what this is what Dr. W. E. B. Du Bois offers to your your commentary, Walter. It's on page 18. He says, 
I do not laugh. I am quite straight faced as I ask soberly, but what on earth is whiteness that should that one should so desire it? <laughs> then always somehow, some way, some way, silently, but clearly. I am given to understand that whiteness is the ownership of earth forever and ever. And then he says, amen, exclamation point. (laughs) (laughs) And understand, the boys is coming from a real place because, you know, he's from South Barrington, grew grew up uh, uh, in the midst of, you know, pretty wealthy white folks. Mm Mm-hmm. So he be, he he began to see, and understand. Though he trained to be a sociologist, the skills were there prior to. Right. Because notice what he when he when he enters into the text. One of the main things he's very clear about is uh, what's the sentence he says: the discovery of personal witness among the world's people is a very modern thing. The boys was witnessing, looking, observing, and saying, let me take a peep at these people because he always wanted to be successful, whatever mm-hmm. success meant. And it wasn't necessarily about obtaining wealth. You know, it was about how do I bring forth liberation to my people for him? So seeing these folk, he began to put two and two together of why all these things were happening. And when he starts to write about it years later, the skill he is, he is trained for it now, and he's also had the opportunity to go to another country and see it, and then come back to it. Right. <laughs> I mean, this dude, he ain't, he he's 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 a his senses are awakened in a way that's that's unparalleled. But that has a lot to do with person. I think that that has a lot to do with perspective. When when you get a different perspective, it changes your perspective of your familiar environment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you never get out of your familiar environment and have yeah. another perspective, you don't really see either the joys or the pains of your environment until you get outside of it to see different things. You know, my whole perspective of a lot of ch- things change when I, I mean, I, I'm grateful for the opportunities to travel, though it went, we're not that far at LTSS, but it changed my perspective on a lot of things because I got to see things from 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 totally different perspectives than I had ever, ever seen before. I'm going to have to jump out, guys. All right. All right. But see, Nick, the issue is when whiteness does not care if right. it's seen it sees it like when we went to Detroit and I kept telling, you know, it was like people were like, and we did, you know how we debrief at night. I said, you know, it just felt like y'all went to the zoo today, you know, because we took the bus. What the we, Sam Hill? No, no, we took the bus. Like we wanted to um, simulate how a person would get tokens and right. have to go to court. How hard it was, difficult because people didn't have cars. So right. we got on the bus, we went down the court. Uh, there was an African American judge. He brought us back in the chambers. We talked to him, and so the guy sitting beside some a real person. It was like, so what are you here for? We was on the bus. Somebody was like, they were just chastised. out. I'm like, man, chill out, bro. We don't need to. This is not a zoo where you go feed the animals. You can observe. But you feel that you could just ask these people going to work, man. Why are you messing with them? Just their everyday life, and you act like they're yeah. they're an exhibit. See, yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the power because you got people that grow up poor, that grow up around black people, that are white, that still don't like black people. Yeah. It don't matter if you expose. There's people I went to high school with, you know, that I know that that. I, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. I, I'm, I'm just saying the wrong thing. But I'm saying, like, they've been around successful black people, but they still don't. I mean, they still will call you the N-word because this is who they are. 
That's who they are. Well, look, look. I think the boys is the boy says this: a nation's religion is its life, <clears throat> and as such, white Christianity Christianity is a miserable failure. <laughs> That, that that answers a lot when you have folks who you, you have a nation, let's say, that says it centers its ethic and values upon Christianity, Christianity, but yet it still believes in oppressive structures. You know, yep. so what page was that on, Brian? That's on page twenty-one, the first paragraph. It's, I mean, oh, yeah, it's, I it's, it's a, actually a, a pretty nice paragraph. It says, we have curled our lips in something like contempt as we have witnessed glib, listen to that, glib apologies Apology. and wary explanations. Nothing of the sort deceived us. <laughs> you know, we've heard this before. You know, people say, you dumb niggas, and then, and then come and say, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, I, I, it was a high school coach. I was telling Martin this, oh. high school baseball coach. Uh, a black player was playing some music. He comes to the, comes on the thing and says, uh, "Turn that nigger music off." We, oh no, we're not playing that type of nigger music here. Comes and uh, the boy tells his father, he the man gets fired and then sends out an apology apology letter saying, "You know, I didn't say turn that nigger music off. I said turn that music that saying nigger off." Like one is better than the other. And, and see that, and that's the issue, right? Where I have yet to hear somebody say, you know what? I just want to confess that I grew up and I believe this and I need help. That's why it has similarities to addiction. Like you never hear somebody say, you know, that man, this is just mess. I messed up. You never hear that. It's always a reason excuse for why I say this. Or why act this way? You will never hear somebody just confess, and that's why you can't. That's why you can't hear when you can't confess that this is a reality. I misspoke. And here's the thing: the boys is saying this is not an aberration. No. This is the norm. Yeah. He he said he said this is not an aberration nor insanity. This is this is Europe. The seeming terrible is the real soul of white culture. Back back of all culture, stripped and visible today. You know, people say this is not this is not America. Yes, this is America. Yeah. I mean, the most one of the most heinous things that ever happened was was uh slavery in America. And did you you yet to see folks really appeal to uh reparations as if that's a bad thing. But yet there have been reparations given to, to, to China, former, former slave Japan, master, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Master. They, they yeah. did give reparations yeah. to the slave masters for <laughs> so, wages lost. Yeah. You know, so so you got all these reparations, but you never gave black people. Right. Uh, reparations to make the playing field even. I mean, that the way that wealth was dis distributed. In America, black folk never got the equal piece of the pie. There's no, we're not supposed to be here. You know, Dr. Singleton said it best in a in a lecture. <clears throat> he said slavery was never meant to end. Yeah. And so the fact that we are here says something to the to the 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 power of protest. Everything we do in America is a protest. When you get up and walk out that door, it's a protest. Everything. And even even the boys in his leaving was a protest. Because you don't have to be in America to protest America. Right. And I think he proves that throughout his work and his efforts uh, to the day he died. Let I me... Mean, I mean, this chapter... He showed me something about about uh, reconciliation without reconciling. <laughs> I don't know how to do it yet, but he he sure did tell me how to. He gave me a plan because I think oftentimes 
we we sell ourselves, we kind of sell our souls in order to just be a part. And I, I ain't bugging on nobody who do, does what they have to do to get what they have to get. But the boys is is cl- trying to articulate it because he said he's seen prosperity in these in black countries in black areas, but he's still trying to figure out. Every time I look around, Europe, you know, all the European countries are trying to come to Africa and Asia and steal their wealth of some sort to take it back to wherever they're they're going. So this essay was brilliant, man. Yeah. Yeah. One of the most brilliant essays I've read in uh, in 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 this whole series. Oh yeah, it, it, it's by far one of the best. And I think throughout the rest of this text, man, he gets even more. The riddle to the Sphinx is the next, and then hands of Ethiopia. Yo, let me let me, let me read this last little bit because I know we wrap it up. The scheme of Europe was no no sudden invention but a way out of long pressing difficulties. It is a plan to modern white civilization that the subjection of the white working class classes cannot much longer be maintained. Education, political power, and increased knowledge of the technique and meaning of the industrial process are, the, are destined to make a more, make a more and more equitable distribution of wealth in the near future. The day of the rich, very rich is drawing to a close. So far as the individual white nations are concerned, and we talked—I guess we talked a little bit about that in the beginning, at the, at the uh, beginning of the segment. But yeah, I guess no accident. This wasn't a no, accident. no, no. But, but, but uh, okay, I'll ask this question because I just saw this today. What does that say to Jeff Bezos, who is the richest man in the world? Who uh, presides over the Amazon sweatshops mm. that requires employees to pack boxes and pick items eight to ten seconds a piece for minimum wages and little breaks? In what fashion? I mean, because they do make a little bit more than minimum wage in $50 some states. An hour. In some states, that is. Yeah, and because then if we indict him, then we have to indict pretty much everything that we're wearing. Um, <laughs> because Ooh-wee. I had to make my kids watch uh, on YouTube the Nike sweatshops and all the other stuff. So. It goes well beyond just just America. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And so, yeah, yeah. So, so when we, I mean, yes, it's definitely. I mean, that's that's hard. How do you weight that? Like, okay, how do you say these people need fifteen dollars an hour, but these brothers and sisters in Burma, they getting two or three dollars a week, and they're standing in dormitories to make our shoes or make our clothes. You know, that's. I mean, that's slavery, bro. That's. I mean. The clothes that we buy, so it, it, it's it's a two edged sword on that. Like you know, um, should should we should we benefit because you know we're America because this is the United States, you know, and just forget about the world. I mean, like Angela Davis said, you know, we have a collective struggle, and we have to also remember them too. Like that's you know that's that's just awful. Um, I don't know if y'all remember LTSS, but there was a um, a brother from um, from Burma, and um, we were studying together for I think we took the Gospels, and man, one day he just started talking, man, and when he told me some of the stuff, I mean, I had heard it, I mean, I had read it, but when you hear somebody, he was so thankful to be here, man. He was just you know, but he didn't want to stay here. He's like, I want to go back and share the gospel with my country. And I'm, I'm like, you know, that, that just, I'm like, but you do know, I couldn't tell him, like, 
you know how corrupt it is in America, even under the auspices of Christianity. So hopefully he brought back the good, the gospel and not what we call the gospel in America, where it's, it's the have and the have nots. And there's, there's, there's schisms in the church and, um, where, where we're just, we just we're just afraid to confess and just be real about this you know the status situation that we're in um even in the church like we don't do we really care about those people like that like i mean they would trade place with us in a heartbeat like they would say, oh y'all y'all complaining about just because somebody calling you the n-word <laughs> are you complaining because they won't let you join a country club but we over here, man, we're sweating. We're working 12 hour shifts. All we're doing is getting off water. I mean, getting, I mean, getting, getting pretty much eating, you know, making enough money and going to sleep and doing it over and over again. Yeah. You know. And 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 Tony says it's so encouraging and inspired to inspiring to sit in on a very intellectual conversation. Appreciate your sister. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. But but Nick, I, I'll say this. You know, my, my issue is not with Jeff Bezos making the money he makes. My, my If I had an issue, you know, if you can make the money, make the money. Shoot. If people paying for it and buying your product, you know, hey, well and good. But you have enough money where you can end poverty oh. in a way <laughs> that most people can't. Like, he could give everybody pretty much $100,000. In America, no. and still have twenty billion. <laughs> I mean, it's but just I, like that's, that's my remember, problem. I can't remember the figures, uh, but at the beginning of the pandemic, they were talking about. Well, in the midst of the pandemic, they were talking about like the top tier, like billionaires, how much money they made since the pandemic, right? And how much if they all gave a certain percentage they could pretty much end all poverty they could. in the but world 11, I, in, I get America, in the world I it says in the world in the world hunger would cost only 11 billion dollars that's a year now that's it and nobody will go home in the world Look, it's it's too expensive. For, <laughs> it, 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 it's too expensive for everybody to be wealthy. You yeah. need poverty, especially you need people to be in poverty for democracy to work. Which is yeah, you gotta have you, yeah, you gotta have a lower class, middle, and upper class. That's yeah. that's when it works at its best. You know, John John Henry Clark said it the best. John Henry Clark said, if democracy is so good, why do you need weapons to give it to people? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and here, that's what we, the same thing with Christianity. Why is it that the only way you get people to be a Christian is by telling them what will happen if they're not? If they're not a Christian. Right. <laughs> You're going to hell if you don't become one. That, that, look, that ain't how you get people to do it. I wouldn't come to something if the, if your best way of selling it is by telling me how bad it is if I don't have it. Yeah. You tell something by telling the good points. Especially if if, if, if if hell worse than what you're already seeing, you're like, I'm already spending. Right. Tony Maybe. said Nelson Mandela said his best poverty at, Absolutely. the best. Poverty is That's man intellect. made. That's yep. the intellect, exactly, Tony. Yep. He said yep. poverty is a is a man made construct. Yep. And you know, Baldwin says it's expensive to be poor. Mm. I mean, so so we have we have all these things that are put in place for people not to succeed. Mm -hmm. They don't. Let's be clear. You you say, hey, we want everybody to get out and vote. Then everybody get out and vote. You say, oh, it was rigged. <laughs> So the problem is not that people are that you want people to do it. The thing is, you don't want you want certain people, all of a certain group of people to do right. it. Then that you know, you know my feeling about all. All don't mean all all the time. Right. All mean a certain group of people, and that's it. 
pies and pots don't mean the same thing all the time in every sentence structure. So when you're talking black and white, pause means a particular group of a, of this section right here, not not total. Mm -hmm. Yep. Tony Celeste, mm -hmm. can I can I tell racists they're going to hell if I, they don't change? <laughs> <laughs> Look here, Tony. You can tell them. You can tell them they're going a couple other places if you like. But I didn't say that. Walter did, <laughs> and Nick and and Martin. Brian didn't say that. Hey, I got even better one. Tell them they're going to heaven with black people if they don't change. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, give me hell. <laughs> like, oh, like, man. Like, like the racist that saved George Jefferson, that George Jefferson saved his life. And because he was a racist, he said, man, this man saved your life. Yeah, you you let, let me die. die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We're going to but the look on George's face, though, right? Part hurt, part anger. To say the nerve of this man, you know. I mean, no, I know it was a sitcom, but George was um, Sherman him was a hell, hell of an actor. Yeah. Like the look on his face was so. I mean, it had to be real. The way he was like, this blanket, blank, like, wow, you should have let me die. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. That's something now. Well, we thank y'all for joining everybody that came through. Uh, be back here next week at five as we continue to chop up this this text. Uh, always, or as always, remember to survive, cultivate joy, and resist, and stay dope. We'll see you next week. Peace. Well,